Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here at the Johnson Space Center. We're excited to be joined by the crew of Expedition 5152, who will be launching to the International Space Station from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in late March. With us today, we have first-time flyer, NASA astronaut Jack Fisher. He will be the flight engineer for Expeditions 51 and 52. And to his right, we have veteran cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin, who will be the flight engineer for Expedition 51 and the commander for Expedition 52. Jack, can you tell us a little bit about your two expeditions and what you guys are going to do when you're on board? You bet. And when I was trying to think of, of what to say, I, I wanted to talk about an unofficial patch that, that we came up with. Uh, can't show it to you because it's unofficial. But I can talk to you about the two main uh, things that we were trying to infuse within that patch. It is uh, It honors the Apollo-Soyuz mission uh, over 40 years ago. Uh, when they started a legacy of cooperation, international cooperation, that has evolved into the International Space Station. Uh, Fyodor and I feel extremely lucky to be a part. I think I'm dead, aren't I? I'll talk loud. Uh, it's, it, we're, we're a part of that tradition, and, and we're extremely happy to be a part of that tradition. The other thing is it has a saying on it, Adna Komanda Isledio Vmiestia, one team exploring together. And that reminds us of the huge team of thousands of people across the globe that make spaceflight a reality. And we are extremely grateful to be a part of that team. And we hope today we can answer your questions and, and give you kind of an understanding of what we'll be doing up there so that you're inspired enough to follow us and uh, watch us explore together. Uh, as far as what we'll be doing up there, uh, we'll be joining uh, Peggy Whitson, Thomas Pesquet, and Oleg Nowitzki on orbit, and then uh, Sergei Rozansky, uh, uh, gosh, I can't even think of comrade's first name. <laughs> Randy Brez Bresnik, comrade's his nickname. Uh, and Paolo Nespoli will be uh, joining us uh, later in the uh, summer. Uh, as far as vehicle traffic, we have two SpaceX uh, vehicles that will hopefully be up there during that time. Uh, one orbital vehicle that will be coming. I'm particularly interested in that one because it has my underwear. Uh, we have uh, anywhere from none to four or five EVAs on the USOS side. That still depends on the vehicle traffic. Uh, and we also have one uh, Russian EVA during that time frame uh, to test out a new suit, and uh, Fyodor will talk about that. Uh, as far as science, uh, we'll probably get into more detailed questions about that later, but just as a big overview, we're at about 210 experiments right now. That'll probably go up to about 300 during the six months that we're on orbit. Uh, you know, the vast uh, expanse of science and, and experiments that we've done on, on the space station over the, uh, its lifetime is, is quite extensive, but the basic uh, four tenets are off the Earth, for the Earth. So we are trying to benefit humanity uh, in studying medis everything from medicines to new production techniques uh, and the such. We're also trying to uh, create a, a thriving commercial market in low Earth orbit. Uh, both through science and through the vehicles. Uh, we are trying to enable long duration uh, space flight beyond low Earth orbit, so trying to figure out how we can send astronauts all the way to Mars, uh, both propulsion technologies, uh, human physiology, all of the things and, and pieces that we need to make that happen. And then uh, probably the most important, and this brings us back to the patch, uh, to enable and, and serve as a basis for that international cooperation. Uh, we need to remember that the space station is arguably the best example of international cooperation in the history of mankind. And uh, we are proud to be a part of it, and we look forward to your questions. Fyodor? Several lovely words. The first of all, I am very proud, and Jack is one of crew in my command, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, well, since my youngest 
age, I like it space program. I like it everything about space and I remember very well because I was enough big boy when in 1973 the Soviet Union and the United States began this great program. Soyuz Apollo program, Apollo Soyuz program from American. And uh, when J Jack told me then it's his real, the one of greatest program in the world. Yeah, thank you, Jack. Yes, uh, for what reason Jack told we have unusual patch, one team exploring together. About our uh, job, we just a little cut our time now. Thank you, our chiefs. And we began uh, our launch data now end of March. It's possible, several possibilities, but we are ready for flight because we finished like backup crew member. And uh, from Russian side, it's again one uh, progress we will have and one very special, I hope, it's my job, and I hope I, with Sergei Rezansky, do it this EVA because we should test it. The, um, it's new generation uh, spacesuits, uh, Russian spacesuits, Orlan MKS, and I hope we will have this very interesting, very explore uh, EVA in Russian segment. And of course, we have a lot of medicine tests, geophysical, astrophysical, etc., etc., etc. Thank you. Oh, we'll now take some questions for the crew. Uh, we'll start with the media here at Johnson Space Center. Then we'll take questions from other centers, reporters on the phone bridge, and then we'll take some social media questions. If you'd like to ask a question on social media, please use the hashtag AskNASA. For those on the phone bridge, please uh, press star one if you have a question, and star two to withdraw your question if it's already been answered. In the room, Mark. Oh, thank you, uh, Mark Rowe for Aviation Week, and uh, I think this is uh, for Jack. Uh, what <coughs> sorts of activities, operations um, to further commercial crew uh, do you anticipate or are you prepared to do? If, I know things have to arrive at the right time so you can participate, but as you, as you go into this, at this point, what do you foresee or even hope you'll get to do to further that objective? Well, uh, originally, during our increment, before we moved, you know, we were supposed to have the uh, demo mission for SpaceX and uh, Boeing. Obviously, those have slipped a little bit, uh, and we've slipped the other direction. So, <laughs> unfortunately, we're completely out of the uh, time frame now. But we've been uh, on the space station uh, involved in activities for quite some time now to uh, move the docking ports around, run all sorts of new lines, uh, new equipment uh, at those docking ports so that, we can, that we're ready for the new vehicles. Uh, we will be doing another one of the, in the uh, planned EVAs that we may have in our increment is to move, uh, uh, well, not move the docking board, it's already been moved, but uh, to shield up. It's actually a fun EVA. They, they have their own little patch. It's like shields up, it's Star Trek kind of reference, and that's pretty cool. But uh, we'll be putting shields out there. Um, we have uh, new antennas. I mean, we've been, we've been working on this for quite some time. So actually, the space station is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's, it's really a matter of getting those vehicles up there. Um, other than that, other than the actual hardware and uh, physical changes that we've made to the space station, we don't have a lot to do until they actually get up there. And, and I love AppWeek. <laughs> yes, Robert. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, you mentioned the, the change in schedule to uh, crew schedules, you moving up. Um, how did the, the change of moving up uh, to a sooner launch date reducing to a size of, of a two-person crew uh, affect your training? How's it been going? And um, as an add-on to that, just flying on the Soyuz, will it be center and left or left and right seats? How, how do you do a two-person crew? Well, well, the boss is always in the center, so he'll be in the center, and you got to be on the left to mid reach most of the buttons, so I'll be on the left. Um, we, uh, we're going to be carrying cargo uh, on the right, but we're going to name the cargo Paolo. <laughs> After our old crewmate, maybe print out a little picture of his head and put it on there. Um, as far as our, our schedule, uh, obviously, uh, Fyodor has flown. This will be his fifth flight. He doesn't need a whole lot of training. Uh, it mostly falls on me. 
Uh, and the, the complexities of moving the crews around uh, are because not everybody can't be experts at everything. So uh, we share the workload. And Paolo Nespoli, who was in our crew, was a specialist in the Japanese segment and the European segment to offload those uh, from me. Obviously, Fyodor has always been the specialist of the Russian segment and the Soyuz. Um, now I need to pick those up. So our Japanese partner, our European partners, have created condensed programs for me. Uh, and they've, we've just kind of shoehorned it all in to the uh, time that we have available. Um, it, it, it hasn't been too horrible. Uh, and I think we'll be, well, I know we'll be ready yeah. in time uh, for all the requirements that we need to have done. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Jim Ober with Soaring Hawk Productions. Uh, to follow up on the question which I had, which Robert anticipated as he usually does, uh, for the commander, uh, you're going into a new operations mode with, with two Russians instead of three. How much more work is that for you, and how will how will you still distribute the duties in the Russian segment? Okay, uh, because it's now two, not three. We have one third job more. Yeah, one third it one six for one crew member, one six for another one. <laughs> 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 it should be the same, yeah. But but the question is very good, yes, because it's, uh, but you know, the uh, space program, it's very expensive program, yes. And uh, the usual our um, week, it's uh, five days only the work days, and we have two relaxing days. It's usual Sunday and Saturday. F for this reason, Sunday and Saturday is the, again the work day for us, because we have a lot of task lists, and we will work with task lists. It was in my last expedition, it was in my old expedition, uh, but now maybe it's uh, more uh, more often I will use task list and like each uh, Russian cosmonaut too. And it's the same, uh, it's do with the American astronauts. We use task list. I, I didn't catch that. You task list, it's the task list, yes. Task list, it's the job what ground prefer to do it, but it's not on schedule because official we have five work days, yeah. So, but I may use my own time for these tasks. What would you like to do on your own time? Uh, uh, it's not enough uh, time on space because uh, all my uh, flights, the last day, last expedition days, I take, oh my God, I forgot to do it, this one, this one, this one, give me one month more, maybe I finished all my jobs, yes, but uh, time is time, uh, time for another crew member, but uh, usual in, uh, if it's free, free time, my time, yes, of course it's mail, call ground, call my friends, of course call the family, send mails, take a picture because um, um, it's uh, number one for me, I want to take a picture, uh, the life is very changeable and if it's possible I would like to each human from uh, Earth planet to check how beautiful Earth planet is from space. And, um, it's the time for task or uh, for task. Um, if you ask me, what do you do, do task I prefer? Of course, the first it's technical, like new technology. For example, uh, Russian experiment. It's uh, Kolonovsky crystal. It's very interesting uh, from new te technology experiment. Uh, I'm not sure how we will use now the plasmin crystal. It's one of uh, the greatest experience in space station because it's located it now uh, in um, Columbus in European uh, model and I uh, um, had had enough uh, training with this equipment too but uh, now I, it should schedule by um, uh, ESA's uh, MCC uh, I like it astrophysical I like it geophysical of course a lot of uh, ecological programs and uh, I working with ecological programs uh, it's many 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 
Unfortunately, maybe medicine is not prime for me, but I understand very well. It's important for ground and not where maybe with big smile, but I continued working with medicine program too. Did you become the oldest member? No, the Paolo coming. Paolo, Paolo coming and Paolo <laughs> could be Paolo. We hope we, we met Paolo in space and he coming for long direction flight. The first uh, guy, uh, first man who flown when he will be exactly 60, 60 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it should be the record for station. I am not so old. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know you're a bit of a tinkerer. What are you looking forward to doing up there? Uh, well, I, I, I grew up a, a construction kid. My, my family and has been in construction for, for uh, five generations now. So building is, is my thing. And, and I look forward to, uh, you know, almost every activity up there. Sounds interesting. You, you know, we mentioned Av Week. It's I can go cover to cover because everything sounds interesting. That's the space station for me. You know, it, it, fixing the toilet sounds exciting to me. It, it's it's a space toilet. You're in space, and if you look over the corner, you can see the Earth. I mean, that's just cool. I'm I'm looking forward to do doing all these tasks. We mentioned the science. Uh, the science is 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 phenomenal, and I I look forward to having the opportunity to be a part of something bigger and to contribute something back for society. Um, I know the, the payload folks have all the different categories. They actually made an acronym. Are you ready for this? It's Hottie. It's after my wife. I didn't spell it quite right, but you have to work with me because it's a cool acronym. You have human health. So all of the things that we're doing to help humans on Earth from, from helping with uh, health technology, bone loss, uh, immunizations and, and, and analyzing different uh, ways that we can crystallize proteins. Uh, you have earth observations and disaster prevention. Uh, we actually cover with the space station orbit 80% of the land mass uh, and 90% of the population on, on planet Earth. So it gives us a unique ability to every single 90 minutes go around the Earth and, and help uh, from a unique orbit to uh, give those give those uh, observations back to the Earth. Uh, innovative technology, man, there's there's no shortage of that. We have uh, uh, the, we mentioned uh, combustion experiments uh, where because there's no convection or sedimentation on 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 orbit with uh, microgravity, uh, the flames actually burn outward. So they, they have unique uh, characteristics. Uh, we have an experiment called Cool Flame uh, that, that looks at that. And we're looking at different ways to have more efficient uh, combustion engines. Uh, uh, there's just a lot of uh, applications for that. We're also looking at, at technologies that can help us as we explore f deeper into the uh, cosmos. We have the ability, because of that lack of convection and sedimentation, to create uh, alloys that are much stronger, much lighter, and have, have uh, much greater characteristics for uh, any application. Uh, we also are looking at uh, uh, different technologies for um, workout gear. Uh, we have a thing called Med2 which is our new uh, uh, workout device, because uh, we're not going to have quite as much room as the space station as we go to Mars. Uh, so I look forward to working with that. Um, the, uh, the economic uh, development is, is huge. Obviously, we mentioned uh, commercial crew, uh, but that's not the, the end of it. We have an international laboratory uh, that is actually getting uh, science experiments now. Nanoracks is a great example of a business that NASA is a customer of on the space station. So we have this great platform, all the power, all the data, all the things you need uh, to investigate in this very unique environment. Uh, and all you got to do is, is contact a commercial provider and, and get your stuff up there. So uh, that's exciting. And then, uh, you know, probably the most important uh, to me personally is the inspiration and the education. Uh, so education is where it all starts. Uh, I remember when I was applying to the astronaut corps, uh, I was at Edwards Air Force Base. I was uh, flying F-22s. 
I was in a room with 50 engineers, all my control room, and they're like, hey, you know, we hear you're, you're applying. I'm like, absolutely. And they're like, oh, we're, all, we're very excited about it. I'm like, well, just out of curiosity, how many of you guys, you know, are interested in space? They all raise their hand. I'm like, well, you know, what, what inspired you to, uh, to get into this business? And uh, one guy said, well, the, the moon landing for me. And I said, how many of you guys were inspired to become engineers because of the space program? The entire room raised their hand. So the, you know, we, we talk about the benefits of the space station a lot. And you always have to have the hard numbers. But that leveraged effect of inspiration is something you just can't measure. And that's the most important thing that we bring to the fight. This is an exciting time for us. Uh, probably the, the most exciting time in, in my lifetime because we're about to make some big steps. We have commercial crew uh, just exploding. We have a commercial enterprise exploding. Uh, and we have huge rockets. All the countries have signed on to continue the space station to 2024. Uh, and, and we're looking further and deeper, and it's exciting. So uh, all, uh, what am I excited about? What am I not excited about? <laughs> the education part. We actually have some uh, groups in the audience. We have some of our co-ops and interns, as well as some of the trainers. So okay. prepare yourself for some hard oh, questions. Gosh. We just so, had an exam this morning, and we don't need any more <laughs> questions from our trainers. So you young folks, this is a great chance. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I guess for Mr. Fisher, you Go said. Ahead. Stand up, please. Oh, um, so you said you're married. I'm curious, kind of, what it goes, what goes on when you tell your wife you're going to space for six months. <laughs> well, so I, it happens. She's sitting over there. She's the hot blonde chick over there. Um, <laughs> It, you know, my wife, and I'm not going to look at her, I'll start leaking, but she she has been an Air Force wife for a long time. She's used to uh, me being gone, me being deployed, and uh, uh, a, a military wife uh, or spouse uh, takes something special. Uh, they have to be very strong. Uh, they have to be very independent and... We, we call it the little red hen syndrome in our house. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it myself. Um, they just have to be incredibly strong. Uh, she's been married to that for a long time. So I don't think there was really any difference whether I'm going getting shot at or getting shot off a rocket. Uh, you, can, you can ask her, but I, I think uh, it, it's about the same. Our relationship hasn't really changed that much. Uh, it, it's just, I'm still chasing a dream, and I couldn't do it without her support. Uh, so, no changes. Maybe I continue this yes. answer if it's possible. Each cosmonaut or astronaut wife, she is not uh, happy with our profession. It's exactly. I may tell you because he is um, Jack wives, he is um uh, clayton anderson wives we flown together in expedition 15 but each our wife and we are very lucky and happy Absolutely. it's like small chinese wall and we in family when we sit in family we know that our wife it's like small chinese wall for our family she saved the so our family soul this uh, our wife saved our Daughters, we have two daughters, we are our child, and uh, we are maybe very happy when we return home and ch check the home exactly the same, looks like the same, everything on the place. I like it to check the rooms and my wife, uh, it's like guide for me, check, it's your daughter's room, she is just a little girl for half a year. <laughs> It's like this. So we are happy we have great wives. Absolutely. And we're both lucky. We, we have women that are much better looking than us and <laughs> way smarter and way better. And we're lucky guys. And why we go to space? Because we return just a little younger. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Any other questions? 
Mark. Thanks, Mark, for uh, Aviation Week again. Can you uh, kind of summarize where you are on your mission training, what's left for you and where to get ready? Yeah, we have uh, <coughs> not a whole lot. So when we are the backup crew, we're technically ready to fly. Uh, the biggest difference is on my side because I need to get those that Delta training for the Japanese segment and the European segment. Um, and then we'll go back and just do our, our standard uh, exam flow in Russia, uh, in Star City, uh, and then fly. So there's not much left. Uh, the only big things were the Japanese and European segment. Also, uh, we haven't had a chance. Normally, we train with the crews that fly before us and after us. We never had the chance to train with Peggy and Oleg and, and Tama. And, and we are just this time getting the chance to uh, train with uh, Randy, uh, Paolo, and Sergey. So uh, that training is, is a little bit new uh, for us as well. Other than that, it's well, what we've done. Because we trained with Paolo. Well, we trained with Paolo. <coughs> the soon-to-be oldest guy in space. Yeah. Sure. So, in other words, you were training already for the same seat in the Soyuz. Yes. Okay. okay. Which is one of the reasons why we were able to move forward, uh, because the difference was the smallest. Uh, some of our guys, you know, maybe go from the right seat to the left seat, which is a huge difference and a lot of training. I think we have some questions on social media. Megan? We have one on Twitter. Jack, have you been given any great pieces of advice or guidance from your classmates who have already flown? Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I've gotten certainly advice from my classmates. I think the best advice I've gotten is from Peggy. Um, I, I, I'm very lucky. I'm like the cream filling in an Oreo of awesomeness because I have Peggy Whitson on one side and Fyodor Yurchkin on the other, uh, two extremely experienced people. So I've gotten a lot of advice from Fyodor. I always do. Uh, Peggy, I think the best thing she told me was uh, space flight is a gift and you better you better take it as that, uh, make the most out of it, and, and I've, I've certainly tried to, and I will continue to do so. Thank you. Another one, how long does the entire process, process take from liftoff to docking? Well, we, we hope less, so <laughs> <laughs> we, the, it, you, normally in the past it took two days. Um, then uh, there for a while we were doing four orbit rendezvous, so about six hours. The new vehicle actually has a system that's like a GPS system that can uh, calculate the state vector without talking to the ground. Uh, so if we're, depending on what our launch date becomes, we could conceivably do it in three orbits. Um, and once the new Soyuz rocket comes out, you can do it in two orbits. So uh, it, it's, it's, it would be pretty cool to be up on the space station in three hours. Uh, for us, if we could do it in four and a half, that would be, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Another we question hope. on Facebook from Linda. Is it a requirement that astronauts and cosmonauts be fluent in both English and Russian? Well, I'm not fluent. fyodor has been doing this for 20 years, so <laughs> he's a lot better than me. In fact, we were doing the commission, and, and there's, there's a word spasiba for thank you. And then there's Pablagadarit, which is yeah. you know, all fancy. And I tried to say that and froze. Uh, it, 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 it's, when it comes to speaking about the Soyuz, I can do pretty darn well. Uh, when it talks, speaking about life or you know, the weather, it gets pretty rusty quick. Uh, so it's not a requirement, but absolutely, uh, I would recommend to everyone, every young person in the country, that if you aren't fluent in a language, you, you better get that way because the world is getting smaller. Uh, when I grew up, and, and certainly when, when Fyodor grew up, uh, you didn't need to have multiple languages. We, we were not as, the world wasn't as small as, as it is now. Uh, now we need to, uh, and the more languages you can learn, the, the easier they come, so uh, definitely recommend to the young people to, to pursue that with, uh, aggressively pursue that. 
Another question on Facebook from L. What experiments are you most looking forward to? Well, uh, there was, there's a new, you know, I mentioned a lot of them already uh, that I'm excited about. That Med 2 sounds fun. Um, there's another one. Uh, it's uh, a synthetic bone uh, where it's, it's this new substance that they can use to, to cast and it bonds to bones. Uh, uh, quickly, you know, we've done a lot of work with osteoporosis and and how bones regenerate and calcium supplements, all of those. I think I think this would be a, a nice addition to that. Um, I'm very excited about the uh, the pro protein crystals uh, because it it gives us a huge opportunity to uh, crystals form perfectly on orbit. So there's no there's no variables due to gravity that sedimentation that we talked about before. And if you have a perfect model, you can more uh, more thoroughly understand the substance and find out how uh, it interacts with diseases. Uh, uh, things are more virulent, viruses are more virulent on orbit. So that also gives you an advantage. We're just, we're eliminating some of the uh, variables in studying these medicines and these, these diseases uh, on orbit that I hope give us an opportunity to, to find those big discoveries and to uh, cure the diseases that we just haven't been able to on the ground. Theodore, what are you most looking forward to doing again when you go back? <laughs> Of course, the first of all, it's EVA. Mm -hmm. I like it, this job. It's a real cosmonauts and astronauts Absolutely. job. Yeah, when we may see the space with wide open eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because from station, it's only use illuminators, yes. It's the first. No, no, may, maybe the second. The first of all, of course, it's meeting with crew and it's the great time, very soul time, very warm time because the guys went us and known when we coming to station, it's time to finish his expedition. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I told you about return to home. It's one of great job for us too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, for uh, experiments and again and again, I told you about technological experiments. I like it this. I like it uh, earth observation experiments and check how we change some places on the world from last my flight. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes it's terrible. Yeah, because you may check the how glaciers. It's smallest than in last time, but sometimes, for example, in 2010, the glaciers it was biggest than in 2007. It was good news too. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's changed. Uh, the um, terrible places it's the uh, Amazon River and the um, uh, trees and uh, forest around uh, um, uh, rainforest around Amazon. Rivers, it's the human's problem, but we continue this job, we take a pictures. And so it's a lot of jobs, a lot of jobs, and I would like to check again the uh, clouds because I like to take a clouds, uh, and the clouds, it's like amazing view in our life, and this is a view like uh, the um, one of a child told me that we look the usual clouds, you look the back of these clouds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think, yes, it's back of clouds. <laughs> Completely different it's, side. It's different side, yes. Yeah. So it's many, many, and each, uh, and I hope the new flight, like each my flight, give me more surprise, more good views, more good, uh, obs good task for observations, and I have several tasks. I never uh, take a picture with Island San Paulo in middle of Atlantic Ocean. It's very small, but each uh, cosmonaut and astronaut like it to take the picture. The Nazca's um, um, sand, the Taj Mahal, and then Chinese wall. <laughs> it's several tasks. I never take these pictures. Yeah, mm -hmm. I tried to try it again, but unfortunately, gotta keep flying till you yeah. get them. So, what are you looking forward to doing when you get up there, Jack? Since it's all new for you. Uh, well, like I said, uh, just about everything. But if I get if I got to go outside, that would be that would be the ultimate. So I, I would really like to do an EVA. 
Are there any quest other questions from the audience? Any of his trainers have any hard questions for him? No, they don't. Yay. Come on, hard man. Questions. It's an easy one. I mean, <laughs> you guys talked about all of the training and having to compress it, and you go to multiple centers and you do payloads and systems and all of that. Is there any part of your training that stands out, was memorable, good, you know, or funny, or, or entertaining, or some system that you preferred training on? Um, just kind of something personal for you guys. <laughs> Um, Careful how you answer if you still have yeah, the fans left, by the way. Yeah, let's see. Who, which instructors are here? Um, uh, I, you know, I enjoy it because it's all, it's all been interesting. Uh, it's, it's a lot harder in Russia because I, I have to flip on the Russian side of my brain, and it's not very big, so uh, I have to work a lot harder there. Um, I, I think the most fun I have is is in the pool. So uh, training for EVAs, I just I just love uh, getting in the water. Uh, so that's probably my favorite. Then for me, now it's the time when we when we began training. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a lot of training. It's a, a lot of of emergency mm -hmm. scenario, emergency scenarios, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we know. It's only a few. <laughs> it's, it's good true. news. <laughs> only way, just a little, repeat again. It's a few uh, pilot uh, trainings, a few scenarios, and just a little, just a little. Terrible time in Russia when we have complex exams. Mm -hmm. we, we, we should pass these exams in, in Russia. It's, uh, uh, it's two different uh, kind of training here and in Russian side. Yeah, in Russian side, it's more complexable last training. Mm -hmm. Here we began have this training since we trained. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it's easiest for us to finish training here. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Russia it's like suppressed, 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 and last one. And the last one is just a big long. So it, we, we go through seven different exams yeah. of all sorts of different types of things from flying, manually docking, manual descent. You do all sorts of exams. But then the last two big ones are a full day in the Russian segment and then a full day in the Soyuz. And if you guys don't know how small it is in the Soyuz or how we sit in the Soyuz, you should look at the picture because that's a long time to be sitting in the Soyuz yeah, getting yeah. emergencies thrown at you. So uh, we're getting there. The fish in can, it's more lucky. Yes, yes. Well, two the fish cosmonauts. in a can. <laughs> three fish. The three fish. <laughs> and our can is smallest. Yeah. I think we have a couple more from social media. We have another one on Twitter. Being able to experience space firsthand is undoubtedly inspiring. What are your hopes for the future of space travel? Oh, uh, I, our hopes are, like I said, I, I, I want low Earth orbit to be uh, a commercial hotbed of activity uh, because not that that's easy, but it is something that our infrastructure can support now. Uh, as, as far as the future, I, I look forward to people my daughter's age uh, going to Mars and and the moon, Mars, just for us to take those first steps in into the cosmos, I, permanent steps into the cosmos uh, is what I am most excited about. And like I said, this is a really exciting time. We have more going on now in space than we have in decades. Uh, so it's exciting to see us take those steps and, and start exploring for real. Another one on Twitter um, wants to know about all of your graduation level experience, if you have graduate degrees. Uh, I have a graduate degree in, in uh, aeronautics and astronautics from MIT. Um, that's the only one I have. I have several. <laughs> Yeah, because it's again, it's diff just a little different because um, I finished, uh, I graduated uh, Moscow Aviation Institute, I graduated uh, Moscow Service University by economics, and I have PhD economics, I graduated, of course, and you too graduated the first level, astronauts and cosmonauts, mm. yes, we done, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's several years. But look here, what is the cosmonaut and astronaut profession? Yes, it's many, many profession in one world. Because each of us, it should be just a little doctor, just a little, but not mm -hmm. bad, yeah, because we yes. help each other. Just a little photographer, just a little engineer, yeah. just a little worker, scientist, dentist. I, I it's don't true. know how many professions in one world, cosmonaut or astronaut. We, you know, we always say jack of all trades, master of none. We got to, we, we got to be jack of all trades, but we do have to be master of a few, so. Yeah. It's a little more work. <laughs> Thanks. One more on Twitter um, to follow up on the training. What's the hardest preparation that you've done for this? Oh, Russian grammar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think for, for Jack, the first it was when he uh, looked me and uh, talked, I, I think it's my... Yeah. Oh my God, this is very stupid old man. And I will walk with no. this very stupid no. old man. Because not at all. The, not at all. <laughs> yeah, but, but because uh, for, for me, uh, uh, no, no, not terrible, not difficult, but uh, again and again, uh, because uh, he should understand my techniques. I should understand his levels, yes, and the first time when we walk together, if you remember the first mm -hmm. hour training, sometimes we had mistake, both of us, yes, do not understand each other very well. But now he is half of me, I hope I am half of you. It's, we're an old married yeah. couple. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're, we, yeah. we've been together uh, training for over two years. Yeah. And so we... Uh, we get each other. We kind of, I, I know his, his, you know, the way he moves his head or the, the, yeah. clears his throat or, oh, that means he's not happy. Or, eh. <laughs> so we're, we've, we've learned those things about each other. And, and mm -hmm. I think in, in the Soyuz, especially, cause that's been the majority of our training, um, we, We've gotten to a point where we're very efficient with just a look, uh, just a grunt, you know, because sometimes I don't know the word, and so it's it's uh, we've we've gotten pretty good at working together, uh, and that that is one of the hardest things in training Why is gelling as a crew. One team. One team exploring, exploring together. together. Booyah! Thank you. Do we have any other questions in the audience? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, for Mr. Fisher, have you been able to try some of the space food that you'll be having in space? Have you had some here now? Uh, I have, and it's pretty awesome. So, the, you know, I was used to deploying, and the first time we deployed, we were pretty much just eating MREs, you know, just a few kinds. So having the, like, 200-plus different options that we have in, in, in the kitchen here is amazing. And then we also uh, did a tasting over in Russia of all of their food. Um, and you know, it's, it's like anything. Some of it's awesome. Some of it's, eh, you know, kinda. Uh, so you have to go through and, and make sure you understand which ones you like and which ones you don't. Um, because uh, even if you're not a picky eater, it's it's kind of like cigarettes in prison. You want to be able to trade them to your crewmates. And hey, here's I, I I really like the brownie, so I got some some it's tortilla. So we we it, it's not only important to know what you like; it's important to know what your crewmates like. So. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, so can, can you tell us a little bit about what is the feeling of, what goes through your head when they tell you you're going to go to space, but personally, like, you have excitement, or can you tell us a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, for me, it, you know, obviously it was, it was, it was very exciting when, when I got selected for a mission, but I'll tell you a story about when they called me. Uh, to come down to Houston. So I was supposed to deploy to Iraq for a year, um, and I was home for a couple weeks before that, and that's when we got the call. And so I was actually home, 
uh, my wife and kids and, and my beagle were home and we got the call and, you know, we've been waiting because when you're going through this election process, it's kind of a, a nerve wracking year long uh, event of interviews and everything else. So we'd been waiting and I pick up the phone and, and you know, my wife kind of looked at me does he look like his dreams are shattered or is this a good look? And she determined it was a good look. And so then my, we're, we're, I'm actually talking to the chief of the office, um, uh, Colonel Lindsay, and, and, uh, and we're jumping up and down. I'm trying to cover the phone. We're, we're all hugging, all four of us. And then my little beagle's just jumping on his hind legs around us. So it was, it was a, uh, you know, pogo stick of, of, of excitement, I guess you could call it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to describe. It's, it's, uh, and, and, and I look forward to the moment when, when we light the candle and, and, and get booking up to space and I get a look out that window for the first time. So I think that's when it'll really sink in. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll come back and answer the question again. Any others? All right, well, thank you for being part of the Expedition 5152 uh, Crew News Conference. You can find Jack on Twitter at, at Astro underscore Two Fish. And you can also follow the crew members' in flight experiences on Instagram by going to Instagram.com slash ISS. For more information on the International Space Station, please go to www.nasa.gov/station. <laughs>